more security issues. Woohoo! Uh, storing passwords in the database. Okay. Uh, you probably remember from your intro security class, don't store passwords in the database. Store the hash of the password in the credit, in the database. Uh, what's the reason? There are many ways a system can get breached, many vulnerabilities. If your system does get breached, let's try to minimize the damage. Uh, an attacker might be able to get into the database, uh, might be able to get our users table and, and all our passwords. We want to make it so they don't actually know the user's passwords and can't log in as that user later. And they can't go and sell that file usefully. Okay, so what do we do? We go ahead and uh, store the hash of that password in the database. So uh, you can see here the example I have, I'll use a different string of live on the video. That's an awesome password. Okay, uh, if somebody goes ahead and takes any string, uh, live on video, and hashes it, uh, oh, <laughs> I should probably be in PHP before I try to run PHP code. Uh, da, 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 copy. Okay, uh, live on video, and it gives me this hash. This is what I'll store in the database. Somebody comes along a little bit later. So when somebody tries to log into my system, uh, they'll type in their password. I'll hash that, and I'll say, hey, does the hash of whatever they type in equal D439E0, blah, blah, blah. Uh, if not, I'll say, nope, sorry, you don't know the password, or... Uh, by the way, if you ever have a website and they have a little uh, password recovery button, there's reset the password. That means they're going to go, they're doing something like this. You can ask them for the password. They don't know. You know, if all they kept was D39, uh, D439E0, uh, they can't, don't actually know what your password was and they're not storing that on purpose. Uh, if you ever have a system that you can call up and ask, hey, what was my password? Uh, and they tell you, then that's a problem. They shouldn't be able to tell you that. Okay. Um, and one nice thing about hashes is if you just go ahead and change one character, the very first character, the very last character, or anything, uh, even as little as one character, hopefully the idea of a secure hash is it's going to give you a new string that resembles nothing at all like this one. So we're going to go to... Uh, love uh, live on well, how about love yeah love on video that's that could mean something different uh, nine seven f nine four eight etc okay uh, totally different hash so great um, okay so yeah this is a good best ha practice do it if you have sensitive data credit card number password whatever make it so that you're not actually holding that data that way nobody can steal it from you okay. Um, okay, uh, so here's a question. If uh, I have a form, a web form, uh, and they go ahead and hash the password client side and then just send the hash to my server, that, that would be secure, right? I don't need to have a secure connection if I'm doing that, right? Because um, they're not sending their password over the line. They're not sending live on a video. They're sending... D four three nine E zero etc. No, uh, why not? I mean, you're right. Uh, we're not storing the password. Uh, somebody getting into our system couldn't store the password. But there's a different attack. An attacker might be using an eavesdropping attack. Uh, if you go ahead and hash on the client side and then send the hash over, okay, D four three nine. And if an attacker overhears that, writes it down comes back the next day and says, hey, I'm going to log in as that user. And by the way, my password hashed to D439E0. They're going to send me just that uh, that packet because um, that's what I'm getting from the client, right? So my server expects to get, if my server is expecting to get a hash, yeah, I don't really, I'm not guarding against the eavesdropping attack and the replay attack in that case. Okay, so I'd better go ahead even if you're sending a hash, that's not enough. Still use a secure connection. That's a different issue. Okay. Um, so, use a secure connection for secure information. Hashing alone does not make it secure in, in that sense. Um, okay. So, here's another question. Um, I'm going to use a secure connection. 
Should I hash the password client side or server side? Either one, right? It doesn't really matter. You want to do it server side. Okay, why is this now? This is a little bit more subtle. This is one of those uh, interview questions that will separate the uh, the really good ones from the, the medium, uh, medium good security people. Um, okay, so what happens if you hash the password client side? Okay, uh, great, your database has all these hashes, but again now, if somebody does make it onto your system and steals your that table, they'll have the hashes everybody, so they won't know. They'll have user Jones and they won't know what Jones's password is that was live on the video, but they'll know that Jones's hash would pass to D439E0. And now they can say, hey, I'm gonna to try to log in as Jones. And again, they'll come on the encrypted connection. They'll type user Jones, uh, they'll type password. Well, they'll, they won't use the form. They'll craft their own form that doesn't hash it. And they'll send to me, a form that has Jones and the hash of the password is D439E0, etc. In which case, I've been fooled. My database, somebody stole my database table and I'm still letting them in. Okay. Um, so, what's the solution? Yeah, send, make an encrypted connection. Send, have the users send me a, there's, I'll play trombone here. Um, to have the user uh, uh, set up an encrypted connection, have the user type in their password, send it over to the server, I will hash it. That way I know that whatever I'm getting is the hash of something that somebody else typed in. I will not save that. I will immediately expunge it from memory. As soon as I do the hash, I'll get rid of that, that password. I never write it down, save it anywhere. Um, okay, and that's what you need to do. So don't hash client side hash server side, use a secure connection, even if you're hashing things, that doesn't replace the need for the secure connection. Okay, uh, we remember from our database class, uh, sorry, security class, uh, that we tend to salt hashes. Why? Hashing passwords is great, but it, there are dictionary attacks that if somebody's using a password that a, can be guessed in advance, say a word in the dictionary, where dictionary is a broader term. By dictionary, I mean any, I'm going to make up a list of 100,000 words that people might use as passwords, including things that aren't in the English dictionary, but things like one, two, three, four, five, because I've been told that people actually use that. And, um, you know, Kevin Costner's misspelled or whatever, you know. Uh, all, anything that anybody might use as a password, I'm going to just throw it in my dictionary and get 100,000 different strings. Then I'll go through and hash each one of those strings. Now, I've stolen somebody's database table. Great. Uh, they've done everything well. I can't, I can't log in. Even though I have I got a list of all their hashed passwords, I still can't log in. Uh, well, that's worthless. I can't sell this for anything. Um, I know. I'm going to go through, look through my list of common words that could be used as passwords and just see are there any matches anywhere in here. And I get halfway through the file and I see, sure enough, that some user, this thing that, uh, you know, I attached the string one, two, three, four, five and gotten something. Let's go ahead and try that. How about kittens? Yes, yeah, so there, there's a, a good password. Uh, so somebody uses kittens. I have kittens in my dictionary. I have a dictionary that says, hey, kittens hashes to this big thing here. I'm looking at a stolen database table of passwords that just has hashes in it, but I, halfway through I see that uh, user Barland has, their ha whatever their hash word is, it hashes to FA52ACB94. Ah, their password was kittens. Or maybe some other string, but it hashed the same thing as kittens. Either way is good enough for me. I can type in that string, I can now type in Barland and kittens, and the system will let me log in. So. Of course, you ask your users, don't use words in the dictionary. What will users do anyway? Use words in the dictionary. Okay, how can we help thwart the dictionary attack? It's not perfect, but we'll go ahead and salt the passwords, okay? So here's what I might do. I might say, you know, if somebody says their password is kittens, and they give me kittens, I'm going to go ahead and every time I hash a password, so here's not going to be our, our best approach, but here's one approach. Uh, Every time a user gives me their their password, I'm going to hash. I'm going to take that password and I'm going to append onto it 
uh, a random string of my own. And I'm not going to make it even two or three characters, I'm going to make it a lot of characters. Well, let's imagine I just made it three, two or three characters. Um, okay, so this is what I'll pass. Now later they come in and, so how does this thwart a dictionary attack? Uh, an attacker can't use a pre-made dictionary of the hashes of all these common words because kitten Z is not in their their dictionary that they had prepared in advance. They would have had to have kitten Z X Y Q in there. Okay, well this is great, but what if I'm using X Y Q for every single user in my database? And somebody came in, hacked my system, got that database table, and looked at my code and said, hey, wait a minute, when they are having people log in, uh, what they look up is not the hash for the password, it's the hash for the password appended to XYQ. They'll sit down from scratch and take all those, they'll take their original dictionary, hash append XYQ to everything in that dictionary, and now hash that and look for things in my table. So... I don't want to use XYQ for every single user in my database. Um, I want to go ahead and use a different salt for every single user. Now this is, if I do that, so for Barland I'll use XYQ, for Jones I'll use A7B, and, and so on. I'll use a random, um, uh, a random salt for every password for every different user. Now, of course, I need to solve that, store that salt in my table because I need to know later when they try logging in, what do I need to append to their password? Oh, it's Barland typed in something. What do I append? What's the salt I used for Barland? So you're going to steal, uh, somebody steals your database password, uh, the database table with all the passwords in it. Uh, they'll see Barland. Uh, they'll see this thing here. They'll see that the salt for Barland is XYQ. What might they do? They might go and say, well, maybe Barlin's original password is in the dictionary. I'll take my password. I'll add XYQ to every single uh, letter of that dictionary. Pass Look for a match. If I get a match, great, I found Barlin's password. If not, Barlin didn't use something that was a common word in the dictionary. Okay, now go on to the next user. Now go on to Jones spend another three days calculating the hash of the entire dictionary with Jones Assault. So you've really slowed down an attacker. It might take, you know, hours, days for every one user they're now trying to crack, okay? But that's where we want to be. That's a lot better. And the last thing I should mention is uh, don't use just a few characters of salt. Why? If you're only using three characters of salt, I'll spend a year and take all three character combinations and I'll take a dictionary and I'll make 26 cubed copies of that dictionary, one for each three-character salt. Um, and now when I steal somebody's database table or, or try to buy one on the black market, I'll, the, the salt's not slowing me down at all. So don't use three characters. Use a long, use 12 characters randomly generated, and now you've really slowed things down and made it difficult for an attacker. Okay. If you're at Radford running on Rux, we're done. You, if you're storing a password, go ahead and hash it, add a salt, add a different salt for every user, keep that salt in the database. Okay. Um, it'd be nice if there was some function that did this all for us. There is. It doesn't run on, on Rux. It's a little bit old for that. Uh, there's a function called password hash. Hash. Okay. So going down here. Uh, password hash of kitty, and you have to give it a, an algorithm, whatever. Okay, it goes ahead and returns this string here. The string here is actually a little bit interesting. It's the hashed password. It is also, this part here is the salt, however, 10 digits or something like that. So it's both the salt and the result of doing the hash. And it's a few extra characters about what hash algorithm I used, okay? This is kind of nice because now if I call password password hash, this is when somebody generates a new password, I can store that in the database. Okay, I just store pass, password hash. And now I didn't need to make several columns, one column for the password, one for the, the uh, salt that I used for them. It's all there in one column. It's a little bit more convenient. Yeah, I know I'm mushing 
different data into one column of the database, but it, it works out well. How do I verify it later? Uh, I call password verify, and I take whatever password was uh, typed in, okay, something like this. Oops, uh, da 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 da. Um, password verify, and uh, whatever came back from that thing in the table, and it'll come back and say yes or no, this is a match, okay? So what is it doing? It's taking the word kitty, uh, it's taking the salt that is embedded in that long second argument, appending the salt to kitty, running the uh, bcrypt particular algorithm on it, uh, blowfish, uh, and then checking the result and saying yes or no, they match. Um, and so this says one. Notice, by the way, that I can go ahead and if I call this again, somebody else goes ahead and uses kitty as their password. I'm going to get something that looks different than before. It starts out with the same characters, but then it has a different salt and therefore an entirely different uh, result. So now even if every user on my system used kitty as their password, this is one happy uh, result of hashing, somebody looking at the hash passwords table won't know that everybody used the same password because there's a different salt for each one. So, Okay, so yeah, uh, this is a nice API. This uh, calling password verify and password hash. Those are a nice pair of functions. They work well together. They do exactly what I want an API to do of lifting the repeated work off of me and putting it into these library functions. Um, so yeah, uh, if Rux hasn't updated their version of PHP, sorry, we'll do it. We'll do it ourselves. We'll add the generate the salt, append it, and keep two columns in our database. It's not too bad, but it's annoying that we have to do it at all.